Psalm 106 says, It is good to give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, through our own fault and in common with others. We are truly sorry and turn humbly from our sins. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to us all, as we have confessed our sin to God, that he of his love freely forgives us of our sin and offers us now the grace and the strength of his Holy Spirit. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Lord, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Our reading comes from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, reading from verses 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer, Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to the number daily those who were being saved. Amen. May God bless to us the reading from his word. There is nothing magical about what we do as Christians, bread and wine, when we celebrate communion. On a motorway, as you drive along looking for the correct turn off, there's nothing magical about a big green metal road sign which tells you that the next exit from the motorway will take you to Stirling or Glasgow or Manchester or wherever you're driving. Nothing magical in the paint or the metal, any of it, but it points to where the road will take you. There's nothing magical about the little camera symbol or icon on your mobile phone it's just a little sign. But during lockdown, we have learned how to use it and other signs to put us in touch with family and friends during phone calls, 
WhatsApp, video calls, Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, and any other platforms you care to name. Nothing magical, no special wizardry in the symbols, but they point to connections with people who matter. There's nothing magical about this gold ring on my finger, other than the person who placed it there over 42 years ago, and all that those 42 years together have meant and mean, all that we have shared in life's ups and downs, and all that we hope yet to share for as long as it is given to us to do so. Nothing magical in the gold or the shape, but it points to someone and something very special and meaningful to me. And there's nothing magical about what we do as Christians with bread and wine when we celebrate communion. Nothing special about whether it is alcoholic or non-alcoholic wine, whether it is bread or a roll or wafers, whether the bread is diced or whether we break a piece and pass it on. Nothing magical about any of that. And yet, taking bread and wine in whatever form we do it points us to Jesus, to his life, his death, his resurrection, and to his continuing presence with us by his Spirit, and points us to one another and our fellowship together as part of the Christian Church. Something or things that are not magical serve their purpose <clears throat> by pointing us to something more, something bigger, something that is truly special and important. So today we will be celebrating communion, but it's not communion as we've known it thus far, is it? Does it bother you that we're not doing it the way we've done it for years? Probably. Possibly. That's very understandable. Just as it bothers us when we shop, we have to wear a mask and we have to put sanitizer on our hands. But we need to shop. And most of us would rather shop as we have to until the day comes when we can shop without the masks. And so today, we celebrate communion. We do what we can to celebrate it in these strange circumstances and to celebrate it in this different way. We're not alone in doing this. I'm going to read in a moment an extract from a document that was produced by the General Assembly's Theological Forum about online communion. And the purpose of me doing this is to share something of the important thinking and theological reflection that has been going on, which supports what we're going to be doing in this service online communion. So, I read something from it now. The panel write, while online worship has taken place for many years, many more congregations of the Church of Scotland and other parts of the Church have been meeting for worship online since the coronavirus restrictions on gatherings came into force. Such services have included prayer, the reading of scripture, preaching, music and singing. Some have also included the sacrament of Holy Communion. A minister may have conducted the service in his or her home using liturgies or services with or without adaptions, while people in their homes have received communion in bread and wine which they had prepared. The Theological Forum has been considering this practice new to many in the church this practice of online communion, and offers these reflections. We do not offer these to lay out right or wrong approaches, or even to offer firm guidance, but rather to explore some issues which may be brought to the surface when people consider online sacraments. And we do feel conscious that this is a new and quickly evolving reality for the Church, and that new insights will emerge as we continue in this extraordinary season. Online worship generally, and online communion in particular, 
has provided a profoundly moving experience of community for people. Under the current restrictions of physical distancing, often called social distancing, and self-isolation, a large proportion of the population is spending the day indoors, able only to be with those who share their household. For people who live alone, but not only them, the possibility of isolation is obvious. And online worship by means of video conferencing, such as Zoom, has provided a strong sense of community, with people able to see and hear their fellow church members and others in real time, worshipping and praying together. Others have watched recorded or partially or fully live services produced by their own churches and streamed, for example, on YouTube or Facebook. Part of the meaning of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper is the uniting of the body of Christ in the shared meal. Online communion brings to the fore in a significant way that meaning of the sacrament. It also makes clear the spiritual presence of Christ. We celebrate communion in the time of the ascended Christ. We do not share a meal with physical Jesus as the disciples did. Instead, we share in his real presence made spiritually present for us by the Holy Spirit. In our own homes and separated physically from our sisters and brothers, we may experience the presence of Christ no less than when in church. Indeed, some may experience that presence in a particularly vivid way online. It is at least arguable that the essence of Holy Communion, the ongoing reception of the forgiving grace of God in the physical and nourishing signs of Christ's body and blood, is even more important in a time when other ways in which we apprehend God's love may be limited, such as work, meeting friends and family, acts of discipleship and church fellowship. As the Forum, with others, reported to the General Assembly last year, the sacraments matter profoundly because it is in and through them that the grace of God is signified and the Word of God revealed. We participate in sacraments in order that we may share in the very life of God revealed through Christ and by the Holy Spirit. There are reasons why some will hesitate before adopting online celebrations of Holy Communion. For some, the single physical location of the congregation is essential, conveying the theological insight that God took human flesh in one single human being. A dispersed congregation is arguably not a congregation at all. And yet, the experience of people worshipping together is often quite otherwise, that the bonds of unity seem all the stronger in an online service when physically prevented from congregating in church. And it has been argued that this time is so difficult, so far from God's kingdom community, that we should refrain from online communion, which seems almost to hallow our being separated. Certainly this argument has a certain force against online worship being normative, but at this time we are considering an abnormal situation, worship and sacraments in extremis. We can still lament the coronavirus and the suffering it brings across the world, directly and indirectly, while gathering in spite of it, as a community which prays for God's reign to come, which eats and drinks together in anticipation of the heavenly banquet, and which trusts in God's love, which reaches out to creation in infinitely creative ways. And so, drawing upon these reflections by the General Assembly's Theological Forum and the practice of some other congregations, we step forward into this new experience, and we do so in faith and reverent humility. And so as we prepare for communion, we will hear the hymn of the song, I am the bread of life.